every now and then, you know, the NBA takes a shift. And when Steph Curry created the last shift, because he extended the range of the NBA, which created spacing and what we currently call pace and space. Steph Curry is a very, very unique player because not only he shoots the three, he shoots it with such accuracy. Him and his partner in crime, you know, Clay Thompson. That was the last shift. Suddenly now you have a player in Jokic. And Jokic is kind of a player that could potentially redefine the position. Not because he scores from the low post. Not because he can stretch the game as a stretch five, which the game is desperately looking for. He is the first player now that you can actually run your offense through as a five man. He is a point five, literally, because I've never seen a five man rebound the ball, dribble it out, and make the right pass in a three on two, four on three break. He can pass on the perimeter. He can pass on the blocks. And most importantly, which is so unique, you running down screen. Who runs down screens for their five man <laughs> to curl? I mean, who's doing that? Okay. I don't even know how to defend that. Okay. <laughs> Out of a timeout, I will give the ball literally to my five man and he comes up and you're playing screen roll where the one is screening for the five. Who else in the league can do that consistently and make the right play? This isn't like an, this isn't like he does it one or twice a game. He makes the right play. The passes he was making last night in game seven, who passes the ball over their head in game seven of a game? He is an incredible, Flexing. incredible player. Definitely. He is something that we haven't seen because he's not passing just from one position on the box. He's passing from all areas on the floor with his right hand and left hand. Okay, I, I played that position. He's passing with his left hand, his off hand. He's just doing this over and over again. All of those shooters are just like, if they get open, he'll get them the ball. He's like Magic Johnson at the five, literally. So I'm going to put him in a category that I haven't seen because you can't switch against him. You can't, he, he's not bothered. And the and, and thing that's really, really interesting is you can't speed him up. You can't speed the guy. That's why I call him the most charming player in the NBA. You literally can't speed him up. When he loses a step in year 10, 11, or 12, we're not going to even know he's going to lose a step because he's already moving so slow. <laughs> this guy is <laughs> just so fascinating to me right now because he's dominating the game. He's dominating the game, not just from – normally you dominate the game from scoring or you dominate the game because you can block shots. Here's a guy that's dominating the game because he makes every single play. OK, and there's another player that's making the same plays, and that's called Luka Doncic. They're just fascinating players right now. And both of them happen to be form born players. Mike, is it as conclusive as I'm saying? Nikola Jokic is the best big man in the league. I mean, you're even hearing bigger than that from BJ. You say he's a top five player in the league, but where do you see him? I, I agree on, on both accounts. I mean, and if you look at the big man, like who we got, we got like. Embiid, Carl Anthony Towns, Porzingis. Aaron Baines. <laughs> what? <laughs> Joe Bear, maybe. Drummond, maybe. Like, I, I, I pick him all day over all of those guys. I mean, this guy's been in the MVP conversation for the last two seasons, and, and he's kept the Nuggets at the top, top of the West for the, for the last two seasons. Uh, I mean, he's one of the most skilled big men we have ever seen. And, and what makes him, you know, so skilled and everything, it's his versatility uh, and it's his basketball IQ. You know, he, he, can, he can attack you down blow on the block. He, he can take you to the mid-range. He can take you out to the three. He can shoot off his goofy foot, foot and, and hit everything. You know, he, he, he can pass. He can shoot. He recognizes advantages. He makes guys better around him. He can bring the ball up the floor and he's throwing full court passes. I mean, I just, I just, I just love the way watching him play the game. I just, I just love the way he's made this team better, and it's, he's just making the Nuggets, you know, an enjoyable team to watch. You know, with, with him and Jamal Murray, they they just look so cohesive. They they play so well together. Uh, this Denver Nuggets team is looking great, not only now but also for the future. You know, even if they do lose in this playoffs, they have draft picks. Their superstars are young. They have a lot of great pieces, and and the, my biggest shout out. You know, they got a great coach in Mike Malone, who who went my, you know, fellow alumni. We both went to Loyola University, Maryland. So big shout out to Mike Malone. I love this Nugget team. And 100 percent, 
uh, Jokic is is the best big man in the game right now. Mo, we've seen how they've classified him in terms of as big men passers. So you got Bill Walton. You are talking about Wilt Chamberlain, underrated passer. Go and do your research. Arvidas Sabonis, who we've spoken about numerous times as some of the greatest passing fives ever. But we're not saying just as a passing five here. We're talking about the best big man in the game, and we're talking about a new take. You're talking about a top five player at this moment in time. What's your take? Well, with regards to the best big man in the NBA right now, there are only two names for me in the conversation. As great as guys like Kat and Gobert are, the only names in this conversation are Joel Embiid and Nikola Jokic. One of these guys is at home tweeting about how much he misses Jimmy Butler. The other one is in the Western Conference Finals. So I think that's your answer right there when it talks about the bit. And don't get me wrong, I've been repping Team Embiid for the longest, but I'm switching allegiances right now because what Nikola Jokic is doing is... <laughs> you could then be Jay. What Nikola <laughs> Jokic is doing Even is he's stepping, up, <laughs> he's stepping up his game in the big moments. What, what people don't realise is Kawhi Leonard has got this reputation of being this big Game 7 player. Nikola Jokic has played almost double the amount of elimination games as Kawhi Leonard ever has in his career. Nikola Jokic is simply just... I don't know how he does it. He's just so unbothered. <laughs> like, the, the most pressure in the world can be on him. And he's just like, ah, I play basketball. I make a pass. <laughs> like, cool. He just he just plays basketball and he just loves it. And he doesn't let any of the media get to him. He doesn't let any of the criticism get to him. He does what he wants to do. He play, Like BJ was saying, he plays at his own pace. He controls the game. And, and that behind-the-head pass last night when they were up 20 that on was... the Clippers in Game 7 was an outrageous flex. That was one of the most outrageous flexes I've ever seen, bro. That's pure yeah, humiliation that's, for the opponent. That's the kind of thing I can only do on 2K. That was an outrageous flex. <laughs> now, when we're talking about top five players in the league here, that, that's a very subjective thing. BJ, I want to know, are we talking players in the world right this second? Or are we talking if no one was injured and everyone... Because it's for I'm me, talking, it's different. I'm, if, talking, I'm talking everybody. Injured players, non-injured players, In including Steph and KD, including oh, Steph and KD, and I'm and, and I'm and I'm saying this why because this young man can play full court and he can play half court. When the game slows down, that's probably to his advantage. And we all know in the NBA playoffs, as you as you advance, the game is going to slow down and it's going to get organized. The more organized the game gets, the better he is because he can play. From the interior and post, you got to double team him now. And he can shoot the three. He can shoot the mid-range. He can shoot off the right leg, left leg, fall away. He has the entire repertoire to play the game however you want to play it. And my friend, he's like Burger yep. King. You can have it your way. You can have it your way with him. <laughs> <laughs> you can have it your way with him. Any way you want it, he can give it to you. He makes me nervous as a player because I haven't seen a player like this and we're just talking about scoring the ball. That's not even his best attribute. This man right now, I'm afraid to double team him. I'm just going to let him get 40 because I would if never he starts passing him, the ball man. and doing things like that, it's, it's over. It's over with him. If you're playing, if you're playing the Nuggets, Jokic just scoring is not going to be what kills you. It's going to be the 16 assists that he throws to his teammates. You know, if you just play Jokic single coverage straight up. You just live with the shots that he gets. You just got to live with him putting up 30 or 40. But it's when you have guys like Jeremy Grant, Paul Millsap, Gary Harris, when they're getting open looks because you're doubling at Nikola Jokic, that's a recipe for disaster because any player in the NBA is capable of hitting a wide open three-point shot. Obviously, there's a few exceptions, but we're not going to get into that debate right now. But, you know, you just got to... It's like when LeBron was on the Cavaliers, you can let LeBron score 50 or 60 in a game. You just have to make sure he doesn't get the other guys going because there's no way that one guy is going to score 120 points to win the game for you. So that would be that. That's why I was so bewildered at what Doc Rivers did last night. When we're talking about top five players in the league right now, personally on my list, I have Jokic at number six. But this list is fluid. Do you know what I'm saying? He's most definitely in the conversation of top five players last night, and it goes down to your personal opinion. Do you know what I'm saying? But if we're talking about players like Steph and KD that people have forgotten about, you know that does bump him a little bit down the list. But players in the world right now, this second, he's no question top five. I look at it this way. Like he's going to have an opportunity to prove himself against the greatest, of course. And we're talking about LeBron James. Game one of the Western Conference Finals and all of us expected it to be the two LA teams. But Denver said, I'm not here. I'm here. 
put myself into the conversation. So, Mike, I have one question before we actually dive in and analyse the series. I've seen them come 3-1 down from the Utah series, 3-1 down from the Clippers series. How much is fatigue going to be a factor in all of this? Because they're playing a lot of minutes. Yeah, they're, they're playing a lot of minutes, but also I, I think the mental aspect of that is what would get me fired up. Like, you know, I'm down 3-1 two times in a row. I fight back both series. I'm thinking, holy, I'm charged up. I th- I'm thinking I'm almost invincible right now, you know. I think, I think that, that mental power, that mental confidence that that gives me going into this series, I, I think that juices them up a little bit. I mean, everybody's fatigued. This is the playoffs. And, and granted, the Lakers have had maybe a little bit of an easier road, less games. But the Nuggets are young. They, they've got, you know, they've got their star star power. They, they're they're a cohesive unit with with good role players and, and a and a great bench, a budding superstar and Michael Porter Jr. Um, I, I'm expecting this to be a great series. I, I'm I'm really looking forward to, to seeing this. Uh, you know, it's LeBron and AD versus uh, Murray and and Jokic. W- will the Nuggets have an answer for LeBron? You know, are they going to be able to d up on on AD? Um, I don't know. I, I I give the Nuggets a lot of credit here. They they they're balanced, they're depth, uh, uh, and they can put up points in a hurry. You know, efficient role players. Um, both these teams are, have been able to put the clamps on late in games when it most matters as well. So, I'm excited, man. I'm excited for this one. BJ, I've seen a lot of good tactical sort of matchups, but this one really does intrigue me because we saw how clinical that one-two punch in terms, especially in the pick and roll, Jokic and Murray was in the Clippers series. And we all know, we've seen it all year, how clinical AD and LeBron have been in their pick and roll. I mean, is this literally just going to come down to a head-to-head between the two, well, two-headed monsters on both teams? Well, I think it's going to be very interesting to see what Coach Malone, the game plan that he's going to design to try to slow down the Lakers, right? We know the Lakers have a, you know, probably the best one-two punch in the NBA with AD and LeBron James. Now, when I look at this Denver team, the first thing is you're not going to be able to stop LeBron James, right? He's going to figure out at some point during the course of the game, during the course of the series to put his imprint on the game. The thing that I'm most interested in is the matchups of what they're going to do with the other guys, who they're going to really guard AD with, right? Because I don't think Millsap is a good matchup. Even though Millsap is a savvy veteran, he's just too small to guard AD. Then on the other end, is is AD, are are the Lakers going to put AD and allow AD to guard Jokic? That, to me, is going to determine the outcome of this series. Because AD basically has been playing five throughout the, you know, this entire playoffs. They've been really going small more than him than going with their bigger lineup. You know, JaVale McGee and uh, Dwight Howard didn't even play the last two or three games in the previous series. So I'm looking to see the matchups that they're going to do. And I think that's going to really determine the outcome. If the Lakers can't find a way to slow down Jokic, right, whether he figures out how to do it in screen roll situations or scoring individually or what have you, the Denver Nuggets are going to be a problem because you're going to have to really control the tempo against this team. They can score because they have the depth. And I'm not sure that the Denver Nuggets don't don't have the better or the deeper team than the Lakers. I think the one-two combination of AD and, and LeBron, they're as good as any. But right now, I don't know how much better they are than those two guys, Jamal Murray and Jokic, as we head into this series. It's going to be a fascinating matchup. I think Coach Malone has a couple days to design a a game plan. And I'm looking really for the first quarter of the game, to me, is really going to probably dictate this series. And the reason I say that is because they're going to really display on the menu how they feel they can beat this team. I think Coach Malone knows I can't get down 3-1 against a LeBron James-led team. Why? Because of his athletic ability. LeBron James can make athletic plays that most players can't make, and his athleticism won't allow them to come back but if they can keep it close with the with the potential to win these games down the stretch, I would not be surprised if the Denver Nuggets come through this series. And we're talking the Denver Nuggets in the NBA Finals. Wow. Mo Moosey, did you just hear that? That take from our brother, BJ. He wouldn't be surprised if Mo? Denver win this series. I'm going to let you have the final words this week. Tell me, how are you seeing this series working out? 
You know what happened to me this morning, JD? I woke up this morning <laughs> and I had to go on the NBA app to double check that what happened last night really happened because I thought I dreamt it. <laughs> I same, thought I was same. living in a dream. I thought I was going to wake up and it would be the Clippers and the Lakers. And I wake up and I'm like, oh, oh, wow, it's really the Nuggets. Wow. You know, I, I think a lot of people at this point, it's not the Battle of LA. And I think that the Nuggets can almost catch the Lakers by surprise here because all the way through the season, from opening night, Christmas Day, one of the games in February, first day of the bubble, it's been all about Lakers Clippers. That's all anyone's talked about. You know, the Lakers have been watching the Clippers closely to see what they're doing. But now they're not playing them. They're playing this Denver team that provides an awkward matchup. Because a lot of people are saying that the Lakers are going to walk through this one because they've got no one on Denver who can guard LeBron James. They said the same thing about Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, but somehow they managed it. You know, like, the, the thing is with Denver, they're a very unorthodox team. And they're great at adapting because of the versatility they've got. To your point, BJ, about who's going to guard Andy Davis, I think that responsibility will fall on the shoulders of Jeremy Grant who is a, a tall but quick defender. I think that, that's who they're going to call upon to try and guard Anthony Davis. The way I see this series is, you know, LeBron James, as great as Jokic and Murray have been, LeBron James is the best player in this series. There's no dispute in that fact. Anthony Davis is arguably the second best player or, or just below Jokic. But BJ was completely right. Once you get past those first four players, the Denver Nuggets are just a deeper team. They just have better quality all the way down their roster. Now, for me... I think that the fatigue will become a factor here because you've got to remember, not only did Nikola Jokic beat the Utah Jazz from 3-1 down, not only did he beat the Clippers from 3-1 down, he also beat coronavirus not too long ago. So, you know, playing all of these seven-game series, seven-game series, it's going to take its toll at some point. And the Lakers, they've had a relatively easier route to the finals than the, the conference finals than the Denver Nuggets have had. You know, they, they had that hiccup against Portland. They won that series comfortably. Hiccup against Houston, won that series comfortably. Then they've been chilling. They've been ready. They're waiting. So, you know, I still see the Lakers going through because you just simply cannot bet against LeBron James in this league. But if, the, if we end up with the Denver Nuggets in the NBA finals, first of all, I don't think anyone, anyone outside of Colorado has predicted this. Like, wow. Like, if the Denver Nuggets reach the NBA Finals, you know what? And, and so far, this year, what's crazy is, a couple years ago, I did the bracket challenge. Out of everyone in Europe, I came first place. This year, I've only got one of the final four teams correctly, and that's the Lakers. <laughs> so if the Nuggets get to the finals, this might be the worst bracket I've ever filled out in my life because this bubble has been absolutely insane for basketball it. it has been Mo, the best get there, thing can you and I've i get, can you and i watch the game every game in the finals can we just make that i don't 100%, care how 100% 100%, 100% bj don't worry about that that's coming baby like that's coming